In today's video, we're going to be looking at the benefits and the potential faults of having a trigger movement. So make it easier to understand. A trigger is basically a movement that you do before the bowler releases the ball so that you can move a lot freer. A lot of batters sometimes struggle that they feel static in the crease. A trigger is a way to help them get into a moving position so they can play the ball from there. Important to note is that there is a slight difference between a trigger movement and a set. A trigger is the movement, a set is the final position you get into so that you are ready to face the ball. Whether you are standing still in your stance or triggering, the set position is the position that we need to get in in order to play the ball to the best of our own ability. Moving along, it's now important to know what makes a good trigger movement. A couple of the things that we need to do is it needs to be repeatable, it needs to be consistent, the eyes need to be still at the point of delivery, the eyes need to be level with the ground, and you need to be in a position from which you can move again in order to play a shot to whatever ball gets delivered to you. If any of these things are slightly out of sync, you could find yourself in a bit of trouble nicking off to a good ball. So, you may be asking yourselves, what constitutes a good set? A good set is when you get into a position from which the knees are slightly bent so that we've got power to move around, the head is still and the body is in a position from which to move, making sure that the hands are already in a position from which you can have a nice big natural swing that doesn't get inhibited by our body movements. If we can get into this position every time before the bowler releases, our timing will be that much better because we've got control over when our swing is coming down and because it's repeatable and consistent, it makes it that much easier. Now that we know what a good set position and trigger position is, we now need to look at a couple of the faults that may occur when using a trigger movement. The first one we want to look at is not being consistent or having a repeatable trigger movement. This is where the feet move into different areas so that we can't be comfortable knowing where the ball is coming from and how much we are going to move at any given time. When something is consistent, we always know where we're going to be at the point of release and then be able to play from that because the movement will always be the same. But if our feet are in different positions, the movements are going to be maybe bigger, maybe smaller, and that's going to affect more than just our footwork, it's going to affect our swing and our timing at the same time. Next up, we're going to maybe look at when you trigger too late. This is when you're still moving as the ball gets released and then you're rushed into a next movement. This makes that the eyes are still moving at the point of release and that there's no stability before we actually go into the ball, thus losing us power and making us rush through the swing. This is going to impact how hard we can hit the ball and making sure that our weight transfer is not optimal. The third big one is where the head keeps moving or falls over in the trigger so that we are not looking at the ball with our eyes level to the ground and that at the point of release our head is still moving, making it seem as though the ball might be moving a bit more. This is important because you want to try and have full vision on the ball all the way down and as soon as you go slightly off center or unlevel, it makes it that much more difficult to see the ball which will be a challenge as a batter. Next up, it's where as soon as you finish your trigger, you're either too open and fronting up to the bowler or you've closed yourself off, showing your back to the bowler. These two also relate to the set position as with the previous two. If you're too open, the bat's gonna have to come around to play the ball, which could cause a slice. And if you're closed off, your vision is obscured, making it that much more difficult to get into a strong position from which to hit the ball. The final one that we're gonna be looking at is where as you are triggering, the head going too far back in the set, making it that much more difficult to get onto the front foot to play the ball. This is important because you need to be able to play off both the front and the back foot if you wanna be a run scoring machine. A few key things to remember when it comes to the trigger is that each person's gonna have their own way of doing it. It needs to be consistent and repeatable. You need to try and be still at the point of release and be yourself at any given time. Thanks for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, do something over here. Also, a massive thank you to all our members. And if you want to see another batting technique video, check out this video over here. Now I have to think, it's a different size.